Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. National Health Insurance promises a more equitable society. The incoming chairman of the OECS Authority highlights priority areas to take the subregion forward. And the Consumer Affairs Department aids a primary school in tackling plastic pollution. St. Lucia's economy is soon to realize enormous economic benefits with the implementation of national health insurance, including a more equitable society. We get details in this report. National Health Insurance, or NHI, is a system of health insurance that ensures a national population against the costs of health care. According to Chief Economist of Research and Policy in the Department of Finance, Janai Leons, St. Lucia sees relatively high out-of-pocket expenditures for health care. Each dollar that you spend out of pocket, that is money that could have been spent on other economic activity, education, and what have you. And health care and paying for your health care has the, the potential to bankrupt many persons to the extent that they are not covered or they don't have health insurance coverage. Only 18% of persons of working age have health insurance. Reasons for this include policy designs and perceptions towards insurance. For the design of the upcoming NHI system hopes to implement an affordable essential benefits package. One of the things the National Health Insurance Scheme is, is trying to do is to meet with the insurance providers and see to what extent we can design standardized products that can be at a price point that persons would, would be able to afford, but also designed in a way that it may change the attitude and the perception uh, with respect to insurance a bit. And to the extent that you could do that, a lot of the debilitating costs that persons need to incur should uh, a health event happen to them that would be, be spread given the fact that they have uh, health insurance coverage and those monies can be spent on, on education, childcare and a whole host of, of, of other areas. Government also intends to undertake the costs of coverage for those unable to afford it. From the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Jacques Hinson Compton reporting. Incoming Chairman of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS Authority, and Prime Minister of Grenada, Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, has identified priority areas to take the subregion forward. The incoming Chairman, noting that the world is going through the most challenging of times, explained that vision during these times is a combination of discernment, a conviction about the most appropriate direction, and the courage of leadership. Dr. Mitchell highlighted areas of priority as the OECS seeks to weather the unexpected storm that is the COVID-19 pandemic. The five key priorities for this leg of our journey involve, one, accelerating regional integration. We must pick up the pace of this relay, and as we round up this dangerous curve, we must recognize that our integration marathon is not simply about endurance, but also the speed. Two, reinventing the economy. Three, valuing our environment. Four, building resilience. And five, enabling equity and inclusion. The last four represent a matrix foundation which must be constructed as essential to the regional integration project. Dr. Michel asserted that the role of the OECS Commission continues to be of paramount importance. He disclosed that he is proud of the work of the Commission and its undertakings in several areas, including that of education and healthcare resource mobilization. Despite the many fallouts brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic, the incoming chairman remaining optimistic reported that many opportunities have been revealed. Infusing this approach will be cross-cutting themes that enrich the quality of our efforts. Entrepreneurship, gender equity, digital innovation, and the empowerment of youth are the interlinked strands which will make the process stronger and the results better. Sisters and brothers, in every situation of crisis, they are seeds of opportunity, which if properly reaped, can yield transformational harvest. This 
is such a time. The concurrent crisis that have afforded us have impacted the entire planet. They have also exposed many weaknesses of the global development model that require transformation. And we have the opportunity as small island developing states to build to scale a greener, bluer, and more inclusive, more resilient, and more sustainable OECS. Incoming Chairman of the OECS Authority and Prime Minister of Grenada, Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell was at the time addressing the 70th meeting of the OECS Authority held virtually on the 18th of June 2021. The Department of Agriculture continues to press down on the long-standing issue of stray animals along the main road network around the island. Anisia Antoine tells us more. The Animal Act, established in 2005, provides for the prevention of cruelty to animals, the seizure and impounding of stray animals, the proper control of animals and related matters. Agriculture Officer at the Livestock and Veterinary Division, Timothy Norville, says that while the department's efforts to control the stray livestock continue, public adherence to the legislation put in place by the government of St. Lucia plays a major role in preventing an increase. He also made mention of the growing issue of stray animals in the community of Borsejou. The history of the donkeys is that um, many years ago when Montserrat had the volcanic eruption, some donkeys were gifted to certain farmers in the north of the island. Over the years, those, the, owners, the original owners for these animals have passed away and those animals have been able to multiply. The major problem is that those animals are not in a fenced area per se. They are allowed to roam on from the beach under the, the wooded areas and now they have moved into the residential areas. Not that they had not been in those places before, but over the last 20 years, a lot of development has taken place in the Boseju area. So a lot of those woodlands, which would have been free roaming for farmers to use, have now become residential areas. And now you find that there's a problem because the donkeys, which would have been free roaming, now enter into the property and uh, residents are disgruntled. Another major impediment, according to Norville, is the presence of stray dogs on the island. He explains that over the years, stray dogs have been one of the major causes of farmers losing their produce and livestock. A stray animal could, be po could pose a problem not only to itself, but to people's properties, people's crops, etc., etc. But not because an animal is tied, and that's where we get a little bit of confusion. Some people believe because it's their property, they can tie the animal anywhere. If an animal is tied close to a footpath, close to a road, close to any access way which is used by pedestrians, it can be posed as a problem. And these animals too can be impounded. So for instance, if you have a cow and you tie it on your yard, in your yard, but you give it a 30 foot rope and it could stretch out and walk across the road, it could stretch out and be a hindrance to walking pedestrians or driving motorists and stuff like that, you have just breached the law and these animals can be impounded. Mr. Norville encourages the public to keep their animals in a manner that does not endanger motorists or the general public. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. St. Lucia joined the global community in observing World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, held annually on the 15th of June. Elder abuse, according to the United Nations, can be defined as a single or repeated act or lack of appropriate action occurring within any relationship where there is an expectation of trust which causes harm or distress to an older person. It is a global issue affecting the health and human rights of millions of older persons the world over and an issue that requires the urgent attention of the international community. District Medical Officer for Grosile, Dr. Diane Ferdinand Walcott, during a sit-down interview provided insight into her experiences with elder abuse. She explained the situations and challenges that may result in elder abuse. Not every person has someone to take care of them. Not all the elderly persons have people who are willing to care for them. And so they have a challenge with meeting their basic needs. Um, some of them I speak to, all of their children are overseas. And so if they get into an accident or a minor injury, it becomes a major thing. 
um, when they are not able to seek medical assistance in a timely fashion. Um, another thing with neglect, um, we can see, or even emotional abuse, even the children that take on the elderly parents, sometimes you find that they limit their activities. It's almost okay. like they start t treating the parents as, as if they were children. And I'm talking about people with their sound mind and people who are able to make decisions. They may not be physically up to par what they used to be, but their mental capacity is appropriate and they are legally able to make decisions, whether it be financial or decisions concerning their friends, their social interactions. And to limit these persons to a locked room or saying your friends cannot call you or any of these, um, any of these uh, things that the, the, the children or friends may do, um, the caretaker may impose upon them would be detrimental to the patient's psychological and, and emotional health. The United Nations this year is observing World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, another theme access to justice. This theme serves as a reminder of the importance to fully address the needs of older persons who may seek recourse. The UN noted that the COVID-19 pandemic has shed light on reports of abuse and neglect of older persons, particularly in long-term care institutions and the community. St. Lucia this year is commemorating the day under the theme Building Strong Support for the Elderly. Dr. Ferdinand Walcott highlighted a number of initiatives that can be undertaken to address the issue of elder abuse. I believe that as an official caretaker, you have to be trained specifically with working with the elderly. Um, the elderly, they need to be listened to just as you would like to be listened to. It doesn't mean that their voice is diminished. It may be softer, but it should, it's, it's just as independent as when they were of their working years. Um, I believe that, um, that they need to be listened to. They need to be appreciated. They need to be shown the respect that they deserve. And if it comes to the point where the caretaker feels that they are not able to manage, it's fine, it's okay. Everybody goes through it. Um, especially if you have an elderly person who's holding on to their independence and you're seeing that they're not able to make the decisions that they, they need to make, or you find another family member is maybe asking them for money or abusing them in that way, you have to, you may have to come in and speak with the person, maybe seek help, seek help from a medical professional or the law, as the case may be. World Elder Abuse Awareness Day was officially recognized by the United Nations General Assembly in its resolution 66127 in December 2011, following a request by the International Network for the Prevention of Elder Abuse, who first established the commemoration in June 2006. It represents the one day in the year when the whole world voices its opposition to the abuse and suffering inflicted to some of our older generations. The Consumer Affairs Department donates reusable water bottles for its consumer education program at the Ave Maria Girls Primary School to help tackle plastic pollution. Marvin St. Louis reports. Small, yet all significant steps in the right direction. In a year where international organizations are clamoring for action to tackle plastic pollution, the Consumer Affairs Department did just that. The highlight of the day? consumer education and it was fun. So today we are here um, to educate the young ones um, because the Consumer Affairs Department which falls under the Ministry of Commerce is responsible for educating consumers to assist them in making informed purchasing decisions and we are here because we believe that we need to start with the young ones so that they can grow up and they can continue, it could be a part of them, their habits, their, their, their practices, and they too can also assist us as young ambassadors to share the word, to spread the word. The consumption and improper disposal of single-use plastics has become a global crisis. An estimated 8 million tons of plastic enters our oceans every year, damaging marine ecosystems. The Consumer Affairs Department is promoting the circular model of waste management, which includes reduce, reuse, and recycle. 
the student is happy to spread this message. I learned more about um, stopping pollution, spreading the word to others, and I learned reduce, reuse, and recycle three important words. The production and consumption of plastics has skyrocketed since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. As the world battles this global crisis, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Commerce is appealing to consumers to do all they can to save the environment. Remember the three R's. Reuse plastics, reduce the use, and also recycle. There is currently a replast project and we'd like to encourage you to collect your plastics and drop them off at um, the strategic points so that these can be exported and recycled. From the Ministry of Commerce, I'm Marvin St. Louis reporting. The Sir Arthur Lewis Community College through its agricultural program is contributing to national efforts get towards achieving food security. The college's farm strives to be the model example of advanced agricultural techniques via the use of precision farming. It provides students the opportunity to exercise agricultural practices and is open to fifth form students working on their student-based assessments, SBAs, at a CXC level. Farmers seeking to improve their knowledge of farming measures are welcome to visit the farm. St. George James is the technical officer at the college's farm. For instance, I know we were the first set of people, I think, that, that grew with the hydroponic system, that we grew our crops in um, flower pots, in bags, to control the soil borne disease, water borne disease, and to have a better production on farm. The technical officer says the farm contributes significantly to the country's food security and provides agricultural produce to hotels and supermarkets. If I may elaborate more, it's not just the teaching service that we have, we also have services where we help with food security. We have our outlets where we sell our, the, what we produce on farm, which is the eggs, the pork, uh, all the crops. So we sell in the supermarkets, the hotels, and also the public, and we have a thriving market even at the college itself. The introduction of the Agri-Entrepreneurship and Climate Smart Agriculture programs is an example of the college's continuous innovation with a view of improving the student experience. Dr. Keith Nurse is the principal of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. For the last academic year, we switched around the agriculture program, so it's now entitled Agri-Entrepreneurship and Climate Smart Agriculture. And in fact, we have, a, we have several programs um, both in relation to teaching and research and, um, and also to new crop generation. So, so for example, with the Canadians, um, we have something called SAGE, mm -hmm. Skills to Access the Green Economy. And that's very much focused on generating some new practices in relation to climate change and climate smart agriculture. The Sir Arthur Lewis Community College farm is located in Denry and runs several units, including the Crops and Livestock Unit, Open Field Production, Wind Tunnels, Aquaculture and Hydroponics. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Climat la terre a quand changé, et ça a affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais, gros de l'eau et qu'elle a pris de l'eau, car détruit les animaux et les plants. Quand la mer a venu plus chaud, et qu'a tué place qui se pressent dans la gravité. La mer chaud a aussi changé de manière se pressent, car elle a quitté côté et qu'elle à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué en petit zin gaz en l'espace. Quand un petit pays, nous avons essayé de faire tout ça nous a fait pour assurer qu'il nous baisse à sous quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre à venir plus chaud. Et faut pour baisser à sous quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous avons tout le monde la terre, cabouler gaz, l'huile et le chèbon. Et ça a en écosse la terre à venir en chai plus chaud. Ça nous ne pouvons faire actuellement même, c'est pour adapter. Fait tout ça nous a fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause du changement climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous n'y pouvons assurer qui nous protéger tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumier qui est naturel. Bâtir caille nous pour avoir des dommages en temps cyclone et gaudelot. 
construit canal pour l'eau courir bien quand il faut. Et ainsi, le canal là, pas les ordi. Faites tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en tant changement climat. Ça. Trouvez plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger le corps et tout l'autre set les siens. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Creole. Monsieur Tan, Janelle, Monsieur et Madame, département qui n'est pas pour information à gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, ça veut dire Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, Capositeur Nouvelle à Creole, Capositeur Primus Hutchinson. Ministère de Santé, c'est un peu plus de l'autre agence gouvernement qui vous suivait 100 000 masques pour servir à Sophie Jai. C'est Go Greg Company Triple L, Collins Lynch, qui fait une présentation ça là. M. Lynch dit qu'il prend un petit temps pour lui ça, trouver toutes ces masques là parce que la nuit on demande qu'il trouve haut en la terre pour masque. Il fait comprendre qu'il ça en a commandé 10 000 en seul coup et ça prend plus que temps qu'il voulait. Lynch dit aussi plan c'est pour trouver ces masques là depuis un bon plan, c'était pour trouver depuis bonheur en mois d'avril. Mon ayant été capable de suivre ces masses-là, c'est seulement 10 millions à trouver. Ils ont trouvé à dans un seul jour. Alors, ben dans un seul coup. Alors, ils ont été ni pour quitter un pays Miami et vivre. Comment dire un lot 10 millions parce que les compagnies fait, ils savent qu'ils avaient une pièce monnaie. Ils savent plus qui 10 millions mas à dans un seul coup. Ben personne. Grand chef Triple L, oui merci ministère de santé pour des marchés au point pour soulager les compagnies à ce taxe la douane pour ces masses-là. Ce que le permanent ministère Benson Emil dit qu'il a obligé ces masses-là, pas seulement pour le ministère de la Santé, mais plusieurs autres institutions de santé, pour les polices, l'autre ministère et l'agence gouvernement. Ce que le permanent a que ces masses-là a assisté le peuple pays autant en façon de protection pour le public là, généralement, et qu'il n'y a pas dit qu'il y a 100 000 masses-là. Triple L, Triple L présenté le ministère de la Santé, il hein, a aussi fait une présentation pour le corps de la Valé Mabouya et aussi station, les pompiers et code garde à ces mêmes communes. Le département agricole, quand encore renforcé à ce situation des animaux qui l'a dit, grand code à ce grand chemin PIA, tout au long de cette ici. Loi qui a gouverné à faire des animaux en cette ici, j'ai fait provision pour protéger les animaux de mauvaise maltraitement et passe droit. Aussi, loi a fait provision pour saisir et pour point les animaux la prise, pour ça contrôler les animaux pour ne pas euh, duver, vaille, vaille, à cela, oui, et l'autre a fait comme ça. Officier agricole en division des affaires des animaux, ça c'est Timothy Novel, déclaré que pendant le département qui a fait tout effort pour essayer de contrôler les grandes quantités des animaux qui sont sous le public, c'est ici. C'est la législation qui a le gouvernement, c'est ici, j'ai établi, qui a joué un rôle qui est très important pour contrôler ces problèmes ça là pour ne pas augmenter. Nous avons dit aussi que l'année a une grande quantité d'animaux en commune de beau séjour. Et ça, c'est depuis après le volcan en pays de Montserrat, il y a une option. Plusieurs années qui passent, les femmes, c'est ici, tu vous souviens, ça fait un bruit en face de notre c'est ici. Mais c'est l'année qui passe, mettre ces bruit ça là mort et ces bruit là multiplié. Il n'y a pas un pack. Et ça a posé un gros problème dans la ville de faire comprendre. La ville dit aussi que l'autre gros problème, c'est une grande population de chiens qui l'a dit à la rue 100 mètres, qui a posé un mauvais problème pour les femmes et les animaux. Il dit que ces animaux, ça l'a dit à la rue, c'est un problème, pas seulement pour les même, mais aussi pour les propriétaires de l'autre monde. Mais c'est une ville qui a fait un appel pour encourager le public pour les chiens animaux qui l'a dit en basse direction, pour ne pas placer les chauffeurs autour et le public là généralement à danger. Le ministre des Affaires, Agriculture et la Pêche, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, déclaré que les peuples, lui et puis le Premier ministre là, j'ai un plan pour faire un compte et puis les cultivateurs et bien les femmes, c'est ici. Le ministre Joseph dit qu'il savent ces femmes à commander pour une discussion et puis, et aussi le Premier ministre là, c'est Honorable Alain Chasné, il a ajouté qu'il y a un grand plan pour l'industrie agricole là. Et principalement, et bien, expressement, les femmes à figues. Mais, mais à faire maladie corona a posé un gros problème. 
Moi, ça, c'est fameux là, je voulais jouer et puis ministre là. Moi, moi, ça, c'est fameux là, je voulais jouer et puis prime minister. Moi, ça, ça, prime minister, je voulais jouer et puis fameux, parce que prime minister et puis le cabinet a mis des plans en place pour ça, pour que PR programme, promotion programme, pour faire cette liste et puis en Angleterre, pour faire des figues. Right? So, nous avons brand figues. Right? So, ce plan um, avancé pour les venir pour ça, il n'y a pas la boîte qui est venue pour place là. So, le Prime Minister voulait jouer, parce que ça fait Covid là, mais le Covid là, il est actuellement, il a pêché nous jouer, mais nous avons pu jouer. Mais je voulais dire que le Corba a développé, um, nous avons mis un programme en place, qu'on s'est développé, nous avons éduqué à ce moment-là, ça a bénéficié du programme là, nous avons mis en place, et puis nous voulons aussi pour eux. Parce que même si nous mettons un programme en place, et puis nous ne pouvons pas aussi pour eux, qui est nécessaire. Pour nous avancer, ce programme ça n'a pas fait pièce sens. Mais le um, gouvernement nous commit, le Prime Minister nous commit pour nous faire l'agriculture, mais spécifiquement, nous commit pour nous faire figla et puis nous avons un, un team, un cabinet qui a représenté chaque agriculture constituency, nous avons tout autorisé à faire l'agriculture et puis nous avons fait figla. Donc so, nous, moi, 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 ça dit, comme ministre, et puis comme ministre, nous sommes ici pour le cabinet. Ah ben, ça c'était la voie ministre qui a responsabilité pour l'agriculture. Joseph, avant de finir, je vais une nouvelle information. Tout le monde qui est pour voyager, les résidents, et aussi ceux so, qui pas résident, ceux qui ont voyagé pour cette ici, et bien, qui ont quitté cette ici, même si pour aller à l'autre pays, qui a un bon contrôle des maladies de corona, qui ont ni pour présenter un document de registration, et aussi un test PCR qui est négatif pour ça recevoir um, autorisation pour voyager. Les résidents et aussi ceux qui ne pas résidents ni pour plein ces documents de registration ça là, pas moins que 7 jours avant de voyager. Ils ont test PCR ni pour faire 5 jours et bien moins que ça avant de voyager. Et attaché pour application yo, pour ça trouver approuvé en laboratoire. Pour plus d'informations sur ça, vous avez visité www.centlochet.org. Et ce que ça nous entend pour nous faire là, moi je autant pour qu'à regarder, je vais avoir une invitation pour que je puisse considérer que c'est la vie. Je vais vous présenter une autre nouvelle. À quoi vous avez Je vais vous présenter au channel. Merci à Pil Primus. Et ça nous us à l'end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.